Hey, what's up guys? It's Pastor Cliff here. Uh, it's been a while since I've posted on my video blog and I thought I would just record a quick video for you guys uh, to give you an update of what's going on in our youth ministry. Uh, God is doing some incredible things here. Uh, this past Wednesday, uh, we launched our series called Reach. Uh, that's all about evangelism, uh, getting out and sharing our faith and seeing uh, people saved for, for the glory of God. And, uh, you know, I talked about this Wednesday, but the, the first message was called A Heart for the Harvest talking about how we need to have a heart for them. We need to have a passion for them. You know, it's easy to go to church on Wednesday and Sunday morning and feel like you did your part, but you know what? All of us have a personal responsibility to win the lost. And uh, unfortunately, far too many of us do not burn for the lost. We don't. Our heart doesn't break like Jesus does when we look out and see that there are people around us, friends, family, people we in our, in our community, people we come in contact with every day that don't know Jesus. And uh, you know, it's even for me as a pastor, it's easy for me to feel like, well, I, you know, I preach the gospel every week. I teach from the Bible, you know, and uh, I'm in the church uh, all the time. But you know, the harvest is out there. The harvest is 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 not in here. So you know, we just just me, just like everybody else, I've got to get out there when I'm at Target, when I'm at the grocery store, when I'm at Walmart, when I'm out in the community, and I need to be. Uh, conscious of the fact that there are lost people all around me. The most, mo the majority of people that I come in contact with do not know Jesus. And the question is, does, does my heart burn for them? Uh, and am I willing to actually, you know, swallow my fear and actually share Jesus with somebody? And so, you know, a lot of people think that, hey, when, you know, when I get training or when I know the Bible more or we have a ton of excuses as to why we don't share our faith. But you know, all of us have a personal responsibility, like Jesus said, to go therefore and make disciples of all nations. So uh, we started out that series and I want us to raise up a youth ministry that cares about the lost, that cares about young people. I mean, we're only going to grow. And here's the thing, here, here's, here's my thing, is that in the church, we want to make everything a program. Everything, you know, if we want to disciple, we make that a program. If we want to evangelize, we, we, we make that a program. And I'm not, a, I'm not against any of that. But you know what? God's plan for evangelism is you and me. We are God's evangelism plan to get out in the world and to win the lost. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's as easy as that. And so we've got to get out there and, and open our mouth, swallow our fear, uh, and just and just do it and see people saved. So, but we first of all we've got to ask God to give us a heart, give us a desire, give us a passion to see them saved. So that went really well. And along with that, uh, we we gave out all of our life books for several weeks now. We've been talking to our students about the life book saturation. The Gideons produced this. It's basically the Gospel of John written in a really cool youth uh, youthy format. And. Uh, uh, to hundreds of youth ministries and churches across the nation, they have been distributing these uh, life books for free. Uh, every young person in our youth ministry received 50 uh, of these life books, and all in all, we have handed out over a thousand life books to our students starting September 5th, this Monday, going to September 9th on Friday. That whole week, they're going to be doing their best to get rid of all of their life books to hand them out to as many people as they can. So I want to I want you to join us in prayer that every young person who receives a life book uh, that God would somehow use it to touch their life. And so, man, this is a, I think this is an incredible opportunity for our young people to do something tangible and reaching out to the law. So please pray for that. And we're just excited about what God's going to do. It's really cool. We had all the life books stacked up all over the platform, and then I, it was just a kind of a great visual uh, when I was teaching about uh, about reaching out to the lost. Besides that, I'm reading a book right now. I'm always reading something, but this is, a, this is an incredible book. I highly recommend every minister, every youth pastor, every young person who's interested in getting uh, and, and being used by God in the ministry in any capacity. This is a book called Remnant by Larry Stockstill. He's a senior pastor of uh, Bethany World Prayer Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And this book is about restoring the call to personal integrity. My God, how we need integrity in the body of Christ. We need integrity as ministers, as leaders. And we're living in a world today that is just losing its integrity. The church is is not that place of integrity that it that it uh, once was, and so we're trying to, you know, restore that in, in in the body of Christ. And so this book is all about how how do we become people of of prayer? How do we become people of God's word? How do we become people who are under authority? People who are submitted to spiritual authority? People who are accountable to one another? You know, so this is an incredible book. I highly recommend. It's it's not expensive at all. It's about ten bucks, I think. Um, you know, and you can pick up a copy off Amazon.com or or uh, through uh, through uh, Bethany World Prayer Center's website. But there's this one chapter about prayer I was reading last night. I just want to end with this real quick. 
And Larry talks about the seven names of, of God uh, in the Bible. And uh, I'm going to read them off to you because I think they're incredible. And so when you're, when you're spending time worshiping God, think about these seven attributes of God, uh, these seven names of God. I mean, you know, I love how when, when, when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, uh, you know, uh, and, and gave him this incredible call to deliver God's people. You know, Moses said, who do I say, you know, sent me, you know, uh, and God says, I am. Tell him I am that I am sent you. And I love that. I love that. that uh, I love that God said that because God is basically saying, listen, I'm all that you need me to be. I'm everything and more. And so giving God, confining God to one name is, is you can't do it. God is so big. So here's seven names of God that Larry kind of picks out here. He's Jehovah Ro Rohi, which means he's God, our shepherd. Right? He's our shepherd. He leads us. He guides us. He directs us. The second one is Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. He provides every need that you and I have. Uh, the third one is Jehovah Shalom. He's got our peace. Do you need peace today? Are, is your life in turmoil today? Are you fearful today? He's your peace. He's your comfort. He's your strength. Find your peace in Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's our healer. Are you sick in body today? Do you need healing? He's the source of your healing. Maybe you need spiritual healing. Maybe you're, you know, spiritually you're going through something. You just, or maybe you've been wounded in the past by people. Maybe emotionally, uh, you know, he's a healer and he can heal you. Uh, the, ne the, the next one is, he's Jehovah Sidkenu, which he's got our righteousness. The next one is Jehovah Shama. He's, he's got our, he's the presence. God, our presence, my presence. Uh, and, and he talks about for, uh, Psalm 23, verse 4. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. God is present with you in the midst of your situation. He's right there with you. He never leaves you, never forsakes you. And finally, he's Jehovah Nisi. He's our defender. Uh, in verse five from Psalm 23, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I love the fact that God fights our battles for us. Listen, the battle's not yours. It is the Lord's. Maybe you're going through a time right now where you feel like you're fighting a battle and you feel like you're losing. Listen, give it to God. He'll fight your battles for you and you'll be victorious. Love you. Hope God's doing, uh, hope hope you're doing well. Uh, I know God's in, in control and doing incredible things in your life. So we love you. We're praying for you and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Even when